What's the channel? Chin Chow, Josh Pete, Games here. Welcome back to another episode of the Pokemon Christmas Wonder Nuzlocke. Now, this is a post recording of part 24 of the Pokemon Christmas Wonder Nuzlocke because the fact is, something happened to my sound file whilst it was trying to save in Audacity. Audacity crashed, uh, Camtasia crashed. Luckily, I was able to save Camtasia, but Audacity sadly I wasn't able to save. So, this is a post recording. So. Let's see what happens. I'm a little worried about how this is going to go through because I don't like doing post recordings. It's so annoying that I have to do a post recording for this episode. But I'm going to try it anyway. We're going to surf over to uh, Tojo Falls here and we uh, talk to this person. Hey, do you know what you just did? You just took your first steps into Kanto. Check your Pokegear map and see. As we see, we don't. I don't check my Pokegear map. But I just take his word as faith, and we have uh, taken our first steps into Kanto. I go over here to uh, go and surf, looking for a rare candy, which is usually here in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. So I thought to myself, it might be here again in Pokemon Christmas, and it was actually. So uh, I will definitely take a rare candy when I can get one. And uh, right here, we go. I was starting to go back, but then I realised I can use that rare candy on Wildfire. And that's exactly what I do. I use the rare candy on Wildfire. I'm looking forward to using the rare candy on Wildfire because Wildfire is kind of awesome. And I love uh, Typlosion, so I kind of wanted a Typlosion. And I didn't get a chance to use Wildfire in the gym because the gym was really dangerous and almost lost me a few Pokemon, but it's really good though. We're trying to learn Swift here. I don't want to learn Swift. But what? Wildfire's evolving? Yay! And we have a Wildfire the Typlosion now. That is awesome. That is awesome that we have a Typlosion now. That is just so good. And the good things kept on happening in this episode. I've already recorded this episode, so I know what's happened in this episode. But I'm not going to tell you guys because that's spoilers and that's not cool. Anyway, we can't... this is our first encounter for this route. It is a tentacle. Uh, obviously, we're going to attempt to try and catch the tentacle. It's level 22, so I can't really do too much against the tentacle because the fact is it's level 22. I just need to adjust my seat here because I'm not. I'm sitting on the edge of my chair whilst trying to record this to you guys, and that's not cool. I should be sitting actually on my chair to actually record this to you guys. So the tentacle works for the acid here. It doesn't really do too much damage to us, so I go for the thunder wave, and hopefully that should allow us to catch the Pokemon with a level ball. We get a bit of a constrict off here. We get constricted here, but that does like one damage. That's nothing. I can handle that. So I go for the level balls here because level balls are awesome. And this should catch the tentacle. One, two, three. Yay, we caught the tentacle. All right. And we, of course, we're going to call this a cool tent because it's a tentacle. That's what we call a cool tent. That's what we call tentacles. They're called a cool tent. I actually spell it wrong here. We're now realizing it until I realized and then I like decided to spell it right. So I wouldn't have trade that off later on in the episode. But today's episode is basically me trying to get to Vic. Uh, me trying to get to Victory Road, and in the next episode we'll go through the, uh, we'll go through Victory Road. I just love this here too. That's pretty cool. And apparently you can get heart scales when you use Thief off Love Disc. Uh, disc again, just like in Sif Gen where you can use them, but in Sif Gen you can use Compound Eyes to find out which Love Disc have items and which Love Disc don't have items. And uh, with this game, you can't do that because abilities aren't really a thing unless you have a Zigzagoon. So, you know, it's kind of cool that they have Love Disc in here. It's kind of cool that you get the ability to do that. I'm going to use a Repel here. Normal Repel, not a Super Repel. I probably shouldn't use a Super Repel. But I decided to use a Normal Repel, but still works pretty nice. We we're going to go through Tojo Falls here. And we're going to Surf. Right here, I teach my Pokemon Waterfall, which I teach. I teach Magic Waterfall because Magic is the only one in my team that can learn Waterfall, and it's a good, powerful physical attack to give to Dragonair because the physical special split is in this game. And if I'm gonna ever get a Dragonite, I'm gonna want to have a physical 
Dragonite, because physical Dragonite think. And phys uh, physical Dragonite is really cool. Special Dragonite's pretty cool as well, but like a, I think Dragonite's more of a physical or special, sp more physical than special. It benefits more for an outrage than it would Dragon Breath or Dragon Pulse. It benefit more for an outrage. So I'm going to teach him Waterfall here. I'm going to get rid of Twister because Twister is kind of a bad move, and I kind of can get rid of it now because I have fun. I have Dragon Breath, and of course Waterfall is very much more powerful as well. So I'm going to go up the Waterfall. Oh, that is a really cool animation still, even in Gen 2, that's still a really cool animation. Today's question of the day for you guys is, what is your favourite fully evolved Pokemon? Let me know in the comment section down below what your favourite fully evolved Pokemon is. Mine is Typhlosion. Typhlosion is an absolutely amazing fully evolved Pokemon. It is probably like my second favourite Pokemon of all time. I still love Lantern, but my favourite fully evolved Pokemon is Typhlosion. I was running off the Repel there so I could get an encounter. And we got a Slowpoke, level 22, not even bad. I can't do a darn thing to that, because it's uh, so low leveled. But again, I switch into Power Cut here, go for the Thunder Wave, and of course, we attempt to catch the Pokemon, because that's just the best thing to do. So we're going to go for the Thunder Wave here. Maybe I should have tackled as well, that would have been cool to do. Because I'm pretty sure it would have lived to tackle. I live the water gun here, which is very easy to do because it does like nice and five damage. So I'm gonna go for the level ball here. There it is. Level ball, use, and let's see what happens. I already know what happens, but let's see what let's see if it happens. One, two, three. Yay, we caught the slowpoke. Alright. Okay, so we nickname we're gonna nickname that slowpoke. And we're gonna nickname that slowpoke Pants. Because that's why I wanna nickname my slowpoke Pat. I like nicknaming my slowpoke Pants. Pants is a cool name for a slowpoke. <laughs> I think I spelled it right, I'm not exactly sure. But this is how I'm spelling it. And hopefully it's right. So pants. There we go, pants the slowpoke. There we go. And when we get out of uh, Tojo Falls, we face this trainer here, who has a the first three Pokemon in the Kanto decks. So that's pretty cool as well. You have a Bulbasaur, an Ivysaur, and a Venusaur, if I remember correctly. Which is something we can easily handle with our team. They're all level 3 too. And we can easily handle that with our team. I'm losing my voice as I record this to you guys, but I have to record this because otherwise you know, this is not going to be a thing. You know, we're not going to have a uh, episode today, so I kind of want to record this. So I'm going to record this and make sure that you guys have an episode. But otherwise you don't have an episode, and I kind of wanted to give you guys an episode. Ice Punch is a thing that Dover can do, and Dover can just destroy Bulbasaur and Ivysaur. I was a little worried about leaving him in against Venusaur, so... I don't leave him in against Venusaur, I decided to switch out here and go into my Typhlosion, which is an amazing Pokemon for the first time we get to see Typhlosion. So let's see Typhlosion. Beautiful! And we have the Flame Ball here. Which is kind of cool, because, you know, Flame Ball is a cool move. I wish we knew Flamethrower, but we don't know Flamethrower as of yet. I'm probably going to have to take Flame Ball into the Elite Four with me. And a Flame... not a Flamethrower, because I don't know where the TM is, and I cannot be bothered to waiting until level 60 to get it in Gen 2. Because that's when Typhlosion gets it, level 60. And a Cyndaquil gets it at level 41. And then Quilava gets it about level 56, if I remember correctly, so it's still not worth it for me. To wait for that long just to, because I have to evolve him sometime. Where are you off to? The Pokemon League? Are your Pokemon loyal enough for you to win? Let me see. Oh, your Pokemon trusts and loves you very much. It's nice to see a good trainer. Alright, a gift for your journey. TM37, that is Sandstorm. 
CM37 happens to be Sandstorm. Remove that inflicts damage on both tra battlers. It's for advanced trainers only. Use it if you dare. Good luck. Thank you very much, old woman. As she said, it does hit both trainers, uh, both trainers Pokemon in battle, but the fact is, if you are Steel, Rock, or Ground type, it will not hit you. Because every, it's like Hail. Hail only hits Ice type Pokemon. Uh, only, only hits anything but Ice type Pokemon. And uh, it's the exact same for this move as well. Sandstorm only hits those Pokemon who are not Steel, Ground, or Rock. You know, Pokemon that would be in the desert. Right here we have a Magneton. I'm going to use uh, Earthquake against this Magneton. I remember losing a Pokemon to a a trainer who had a Magneton because I think Magneton in Sacred Gold Storm was Silver, which was the last Gen 2, Gen 4 playthrough I did, uh, had a Magnet Pulse. Um, yeah, I had a Magnet Pull Magneton, and it really annoyed me that there was a thing. I mean, I think it might have been a Magnet Zone, actually, nowadays, but still, it's really annoying when that happens, because that actually lost me my Skormory when that happened, because Skormory was leading the party at the time. I am in Secret Gold, and that was just so annoying. But in today's episode, he was not leading the party, and he was able to come in against this Execute and destroy, because that's what he does. And then here's a Quagsire. We have nothing to deal with Quagsire, so I decided to go... After a lot of umming and ahhing, I decided to go into magic eventually. And go for the Dragon Breaths. It does... It does a good idea, but the fact is, I don't really have any idea of what I can do against uh, Grass-type Pokemon... Well, Water-Ground-type Pokemon at this time. I don't have any moves that can deal with them at this moment in time. I wish I had, like... Energy Ball would be pretty cool on, like, Typlosion, but I don't have that. I don't even know if Typlosion could learn it, actually. Or if Energy Ball's even in this game. But Dragon Breath's a thing I can do, and Dragon Breath will do really nicely here. And it paralyzes first time, too. So that's really cool as well. He tries to use Amnesia here to build his special defense up, which actually does really help because it allows him to survive this Dragon Breath right here. Uh, but the fact is, he's fully paralyzed, so he can't do anything about the Dragon, the third Dragon Breath, which is incoming, and he dies from it. So, Magic, you did brilliantly there. Not even bad. We beat Ace Trainer Blake. Not even bad. So, I'm going to take on this trainer now. Let's see what this guy has. Let's see. Uh, so you have one Pokemon and you have a Sand Slash. Sand Slash, not a very hard Pokemon to defeat. It does try and use Sand Attack here, but like Sand Attack's not going to do any damage to me. And uh, Dover can get over those Sand. He can wipe that Sand right out of his eyes. And of course, he can surf away the damage. And that's exactly what he does. Surfs away and says no to your sand. I say no to your sand, and there we go. Dover, amazing. Just as good as I thought we are. Yep. And of course we walk into this battle as well, because you, you're right next to this other trainer. And uh, this is a psychic type trainer who has three Pokemon. So let me let's sign to uh, think about a subject I can talk about whilst this is, is going on, so I can figure out like things I can talk to you guys about because I'm kind of annoyed that uh, I had to post record this episode. But let's see what I can think about because there might be things I can think about to talk to you guys about whilst I am trying to post record this episode. I mean, let's talk about EGX for example. EGX was a great uh, is a great gaming convention that I went to this year. I went to last year's one too, but I I went to this year's one. I met my friends uh, Chibi, I met Beck, and I met um, Jordan and Norfolk Gaming as well. I also met people uh, I barely know, like Ryquin and the Trojan Horsey and uh, some other people as well. But I can't remember their names off the top of my head, but I met people. I met quite a lot of people. I booked it to Game Boy Luke a few times too. I passed by Game Boy Luke. I was too afraid to talk to him. 
Again, I'm shy, remember? And I would have never been able to book up the courage to talk to Game Boy Luke. He's just such an awesome PokeTuber that I would have never been able to book up the courage to talk to him. But one day I will. One day I will talk to you, Game Boy Luke. If you ever watch this video, know that you are a big inspiration to what I do right here on YouTube. So, I also realise I'm far too shy at... Uh, at Eurogame, I realised I am far too shy for my own good, and it just so annoyed me. But I have solutions around that, I'm trying to find ways around that. I've asked my brother to come to uh, Eurogame next year with me, to uh, play some games with me, and, uh, you know, so I can be more confident around people, and uh, that's a f cool thing that I can do. I can ask my brother to come with me to Eurogamer. I don't even have to pay for his ticket, because he just literally said to me, I will come. Like, I don't have to pay, you don't have to pay for my tickets, I want to come with you. And that's really cool, because I kind of need people like that. I kind of need people who want to come with me to these things. And here I am looking for a grass type move, by the way, to see if I have anything that can help me deal with grass, uh, with water ground types, but I realise I have nothing. Nothing that deals with water ground types. Oops, but it does take me a while to go through my moves to find that out. Maybe if I had Hidden Power Grass on one of my Pokemon, that'd be very cool. Hidden Power Guy, that's what we need in this game. We need the Hidden Power Person. You know, who'd reach your hidden powers. That'd be cool. But anyway, we face this trainer here, and this trainer has three Pokemon. So getting back to my topic, I realised I've been shy. I'm a very shy person at Eurogamer, and it's... It scares me because like anything I do which is new to me, I don't want to do it first time. Like anything that I do is new anything that I do that's new to me, I don't want to do, and I get scared. And like going into new places, playing new video games that I've never played before with friends, just in case I embarrass myself, I get scared. And it scares the it scares me and I don't like that. Because it like it stops me from doing stuff, and I feel like if I have people that I like there, and people that I know, people will encourage me to say, hey, go on Joe, go and try this. You know, you'll like it eventually. You know, you just need to get used to it and get yourself out there more, and that's what I want to do. I want to get myself out there more. There's a huge wide world out there, and I'm only a... I only contain a small percentage of that world, and I only see that small percentage on a daily basis. So, me trying to see the bigger, wider world out there is pretty cool that I get to do that. And I have family that is allowing me to do that, so I'm really happy with that. And I'm really, just really, really happy that my family is allowing me to do that. I guess, like, since I was very, very young, I've been always, you know, shy because of the new environments and things. So much so when I was young, I used to talk to myself an awful lot, and it's not actually, and I still do to this day, I don't like to admit it, but I still do. Yeah, I still kind of talk to myself quite a bit when I'm all alone, and I live alone, so, you, you know, it's going to happen quite a bit. I use Tackle here, and I don't know why, but I live alone, so I'm going to talk to myself quite a bit, because I can get kind of lonely here. But uh, it's kind of cool to live on my own, because, it's, you know, teaches you responsibilities and stuff like that. I suggest people, you know, move out of their parents' houses when they are old enough to move out of their parents' houses. I'm one of those people who's, you know, fun for getting a place of your own. That's a good thing to have. Get a place of your own where you can go and uh, live by yourself and teach yourself how to, you know, feed yourself, how to clothe yourself, how to do everything that your parents used to do for you. But you didn't, you know, you take for granted in this world because the fact is, well, basically, you know, your parents did it. And you can't, you know, you can't fight them enough for doing it, but, you know, you take it for granted that they did it in the first place. So we're facing a Fisher Trainer here. Not really important to my story, but I'm just saying that I just want to keep referencing the uh, game here and now. So yeah, when I was young, I used to talk to myself an awful lot. I still talk to myself an awful lot to this day. And it just kind of annoys me that I have to do that. But 
I guess it's just something I do, and uh, it's an easy upgrade from talking to myself to let's playing video games, because basically, it's just basically talking to yourself whilst you're playing a video game. So, yeah, it's the exact same thing as I'm doing right now, talking to you guys, because you guys aren't really here. You know, you're not in the room next to me, but I try and make it seem like you are. And that's what I do when I'm let's playing a game, so, you know, let's playing is rather cool. And I really enjoy Let's Playing, but I'm just saying that's what I do to make myself feel like, you know, talking to myself is not really as bad as I think it is. I actually switched Thunderbolt up to the first position for this match, uh, because I kept on thinking I was going to hit Tackle again, and I don't want to hit Tackle, so I decided to switch Thunderbolt up to the first position. We got to level 42 here with our... Uh, uh, with power cut, and we're trying to learn light screen. I kind of don't want to learn light screen, so I stopped learning light screen. And I believe this person has another Pokemon as well. He has Quillfish, so we're going to try and uh, get rid of this Quillfish with a Thunderbolt. And then I believe we should be on to a new route. So not bad at all. Power Cut does really good damage there and comes through amazingly. So we go up here. And of course this means we are in a new route, but I didn't check that until, until after this match here. So we face this trainer here. This guy has a, this guy has one Pokemon and it's an Espeon if I remember correct. Yeah, it's an Espeon. It's an Espeon. You an Espeon, and that's perfectly fine. You can have an Espeon, and I'm going to Earthquake that away. I do I get hit by Confusion here, but it doesn't do enough. It does a little bit of damage, but it's fine, and, and you're not living this. You're not living this. No matter what you say and say, Espeon, Espeons are not tanky. Not physically tanky in any way, shape, or form. So they can just die to the, the Earthquake. And we beat Psychic Richard. Good battle. It was. Well, it kind of wasn't really, because I destroyed you and you had one Pokemon. But here is the heal house for this route, so I decided to go in here and heal my Pokemon. And I decided to go down the other down here to find the other house. But this is where the most amazing thing happens. Shiny Radicate! Awesome, awesome, awesome. Shiny claws in effect, and it is so awesome that we have a shiny Radicate. I literally freaked out here when I was recording this episode. It is so awesome to have a shiny Radicate. That is so awesome. Now, obviously, I want to try and catch this. I don't know exactly what shiny, uh, how shiny claws works when you're when it's your first encounter, but uh, the shiny Pokemon is your first encounter. But that's still pretty cool. Well, that I got a shiny Pokemon, and I do try and go for the level balls here, but he doesn't—he doesn't want any of it. He does not want any. She does not want any of these level balls, as we can see here. Does not want a level ball. Oh, well, so that annoys me. So I throw again. I throw another level ball here. Trying again to catch the Pokemon. Again, still does not want that level ball. So I get my speed lowered by this Radicate, and I keep on saying that I want the Radicate. I'm going to keep on trying to go for the Radicate here. Again, I throw another level ball out here. But still, no. You know, he doesn't want the level balls, no matter how much I try. So I try for a great ball, I try to upgrade my ball all quality, and see if that helps. But it doesn't actually help, he just like doesn't even bounce this time. So I get quick attacked here and doesn't do a lot of damage, but it's fine. I find myself having an Ultra Ball and I decide to throw that at this Pokemon as well because, you know, again, upgrading my ball quality, but still no, doesn't really feel like that's a thing. So that's fine. I get scary faced again here. And I keep on thinking to myself, what am I going to do to Poke what am I going to do to this Pokemon? I try a fastball here because I remember that Radicate is a fast Pokemon. So I tried a fastball here. Still nothing, by the way. 
We get fully, uh, Eradicate gets fully paralyzed here. So I try one last time with the level ball. And this time I believe I actually do catch it. One, two, three. Yay, we caught the shiny Radicate. We add Radicate to our Pokedex. Not even bad. And of course, I'm going to name this Amy. Because Amy is uh, the name of my Radicate in Pokemon Blue. And it was just such an awesome Radicate. I took that all, all the way to the Elite Four in my Pokemon Blue Nuzlocke. I did off screen before I even started this channel. That's just really cool. I decided to find out what else I could find in this route, and I found another Radicate here. So I decided to um, I decided to ice punch that away. Well, actually, I don't decide to ice. I decided to uh, destroy it because I felt like it. I'm not sure what I was going to do with the Pokemon. I felt like. Maybe if I caught the Pokemon and I caught another Pokemon to Wonder Trade, that would be a good idea. So I decided to paralyze this, but then I decided against that idea. Yeah, so I decided to go for a Thunder Punch here. Realizing that it actually could have lived, that this one would have lived the Thunder Punch. And this one's two levels higher than Amy is. So it, this one would have lived the Thunder Punch, just barely. But Amy wouldn't have lived the Thunder Punch. Amy would not live the Thunder Punch at all. So we go down here and we find a house, which we will go into in a minute once we got out of this battle. So here's another Eradicate and I decided to run away from this one, because it's not shiny like our other Radi uh, our brilliant Amy is. You know, Amy's shiny and that's awesome. So we run away from this and we then talk to this. There's something written here. Read it? Yes. To my brothers and sisters, take pride in serving Pokemon Trick. Sit down to Pokemon trainers. When trainers talk to you, give them a gift. Give them something useful. Love Monica. Keep reading. Monday, Monica, Route 40. Tuesday, Tuscany, Route 29. Wednesday, Wesley, Route 20. Uh, route Lake of Rage. Thursday, Arthur, Route 36. Fr Friday, Frida, Route 32. Saturday, Cintos, Bratford City. And of course, Sunny on a Sunday. Level. Route 37. I kept on keeping saying level and it's not level, it's route. It, so I'm trying to get back around to uh, where I was here. And uh, again, I get to the floor here. I get to the bottom of the route here and decide to surf over to the bridge. And I switch over to my bike. Which is a good idea because the fact is we are faster on our bike. We do run into another Pokemon here, but this is a quag, so I'm going to run away from that. At right now hopefully so this episode goes a bit long I'm really sorry about that it's just basically I wanted to get to Victory Road we are nearly near Victory Road I decided to try and avoid this trainer but I do actually go back to her as well I don't know why I went back like I don't know why I didn't face her in the first place because like after facing this person I decided to go back so this person has three Pokemon, he's Ace Trainer Gavin, he starts off with a Victory Bell. I can't deal with a Victory Bell with Dover in front of the battle, because Dover would get destroyed by Victory Bell, so I decided to go into Falcon here. And Falcon can do some rather good damage against Victory Bell. Victory Bell decides to go for Toxic, but that doesn't affect Falcon because Falcon's Steel type and no poison type moves hit Steel type Pokemon. We get hit. Uh, we miss that Razor Leaf here. You know, Victory Bell This is that Razor Leaf here, and we go for the Fly, and it destroys the Victory Bell. Not even bad. And of course, Magic gains some experience as well as Falcon gaining experience. Then we go and find out this guy has a Flareon. We decide to go into Dover for the Flareon, because Dover knows what to do against Flareons, because Dover's amazing. And hopefully Dover gets to uh, come to us, come through with us to Victory Road and so many other places. Possibly on Kanto. I'd love to see Dover in Kanto. Just so awesome. Earthquake came through and destroys. He's, and then Kingler comes out. We decide to switch into Power Cut here to go for that Thunderbolt. Alt and 
it does actually destroy the uh, Kingler, so that's pretty cool. As we will see here, the Kingler just doesn't stay around for this. Not even bad, and it's a crit too. I think it would have lived it even if I don't think it would have lived it even if it wasn't a crit. Magic is level 44 here. That is awesome. And of course, I decided to go back here and I decided to face this trainer after all. So, of course, I'm going to face the trainer. So let's see what this person has. This person has two Pokemon, she's Ace Trainer Joyce, and she has a Pikachu, level 32. But it's Pikachu, so I don't really care about it. It, it does try to double team away, but eventually I do get through that Earthquake. After the second time here double teaming, I do eventually get through the Earthquake, and this Pikachu goes down to that. But you know, it's Pikachu, it's not going to live. It wouldn't even live it, even if it had a light ball. Just can't live that. Sorry, Pikachu, you just die. You're not going to live that. And you have a this person had a Blastoise as well. I decided to switch into Power Cut here for the Thunderbolt. And of course, Power Cut is going to destroy this Blastoise. As much as I love Blastoise, Blastoise is one of my favourite Pokemon as well. Probably my third favourite, but the fact is still, it's going to go down here. There we go. Not even bad. So Blastoise goes down, of course, and we beat Ace Trainer Joyce. And I decide to go on from here and go and face the final trainer of, vi of this route before going to face Victory Road. But before I do that, I go down here and pick up this item here, which is a Max Elixir. Not even bad. So I run back up here fast as I can and talk to this girl right here. And she has one Pokemon if I remember correctly. She has one Pokemon if I remember correctly. Yeah, she has one Pokemon and she has a Rapidash. You're right, that's easy to kill for Dover. It doesn't even pose a threat to Dover because it didn't even try to pose a threat. Here it is using agility. That's not going to help you, you're already faster than me, and Dover is not very fast at all. But of course, Dover can just destroy with one Surf. That is not living a Surf. Rapidash is not living a Surf. Down goes the Rapidash, we get some experience, Magic gets some experience, and of course we beat Aikaya. No Pokemon Trainer, Aikaya. We go round Aikaya, and of course we go up here, and talk to this person. Only trainers who have proven themselves worthy may pass. Oh, the eight badges of Jodo. You know, go on right ahead. And then we talk to this person right here as well. Off to the Pokemon League, are you? The Elite Fours are the strongest, scary, and they're ready for you. So we go into Victory Road here, and I go and try and get my encounter for Victory Road. Mood, it's an Ursaring, and it's level 33. I try and weaken it, but I don't actually do a very good job at weakening it, so it lives a strength here. Which does quite a bit of damage to it, but it goes straight for that rest to go back to, uh, to go to sleep and get all that energy back, all that HP back, sorry. And then I go for the Ice Punch here, because Ice Punch is, uh, it's not stab and of course, no, and it's not as powerful as uh, strength is. So it does around about the same damage, but I try and see if I can get another one off to get in the red, but sadly I can't. And I think to myself, well, never mind. And as we can see here, we go back from Victory Road, back to Route 27, uh, back to this route here, which is Route 26 actually. And I decided to fly on Scormory to go and do my Wonder Trades for this episode. So I fly back to Goldenrod here. Seeing if I'm trying to see if I can fly from the Poke back to the Pokemon League from Jodo, which I can't do sadly. So I say that I'm gonna have to meet you guys back at Victory Road to go through Victory Road in the next episode. 
food because this is where I sort of end the episode with our usual wonder trades. Of course, I'm going to show off my shiny again because it's shiny and I, need, I love it and I need to see it one more. I need to actually see it. So I deposit here Dover and Power Cut. And we go and withdraw from the box. But first off, we're going to look at Amy. Let's see, there's Amy. That's amazing. Just shiny, shiny Radicate. Amazing. I might even put Shiny Radicate on uh, the thumbnail for this episode. But again, that's kind of spoilers. And I don't want to know if I want to do that. I just might put regular Radicate on there just in case. Just in case you guys catch up to that. I don't really want to give you guys spoilers that we caught a shiny. I want you to get hyped that we caught a shiny in the first place. But shiny look doesn't happen to me uh, very often. Shinies do not happen for me very often. I'm not a shiny hunter, so I don't really care too much for them. But that's just so awesome when you get a shiny. It's so awesome when you get a shiny. So we want to trade away this slowpoke here. And we're receiving a mon. And of course, nicknames are removed, but we get a Mistrevis, and that's pretty cool. I don't actually know what to call Mistrevis, so I just decided to cop out and call it Tim. Probably one of the worst names ever, but still, it's, it's Tim. And so it just, I, I can't, I'm still muttering, umming, and ahhing about this name, and then I decided to call him Tim. I say that like, it's the worst name ever. I'm sorry to those people who named Tim, by the way. Uh, yeah, I just don't think it's a really appropriate name for a Mistrevis, so I just can't think of a name right now for a Mistrevis. So we decide to Wonder Trade away again here. And this time we're going to try and Wonder Trade away Cool Tent, our, our tentacle here. But of course, we get some. Uh, we get a lot of dupes here. We start off with a Magby, but we've also got a Magmar, so that again, that's Speece. That is either dupes or Speece. That is Dupe Splash Species, and of course I can't accept that in this kind of lock, so I decided to Wonder Trade that away. Hey, and here we're going to Wonder Trade that away now. Well, after I've named it Titdug. Because Titdug is the name I usually go for with my Magmars and Magbees and Magmortars as well. But I'm going to Wonder Trade them away because that is Dupes. It's level 39, so it's really powerful, but sadly, I can't keep it. As much as I'd love to keep it, I can't keep it because it's dupes. No matter what level it is, it's still dupes. Here we get a Hypno. And again, we've already got a Kid Catcher, the Hypno, so I can't keep this either. So I decided to call it Kid. And then I decided to Wonder Trade that away as well, because we can't keep that. I do go and actually check if we do have a kid catcher, just in case. He's put, I believe we do have one of those, so here I am going to look in the PC for our kid catcher, the Hypno, because I swear we do have one. And here we are, of course, fight, uh, looking for it and finding it, so there it is, right after, right before Guild, our Wigglytuff, so there we go. And of course, we can't keep that, so I'm going to want to trade that away as well. And this time, we get something we can keep, which I actually really like too. So we're going to want to trade this away, and uh, we're going to want to trade this Hypno away, and this time we get an Umbreon. Now that's really cool, because that's my friend Beck. And I decided to name it after my friend Beck, okay, aka Baraki XY. But I can't exactly spell Baraki XY, so I make a little cut here in the video to find out how to spell her name. So, I will make... I do make a little cut here, and I decide to uh, make the skip here. And of course, I complete the Wonder Trade off screen. Kind of complete the Wonder Trade off screen, because I decided I wanted to nickname it Baraki. And here's Baraki, it's level 17. It's Baraki the Umbreon, level 17, dark type as you guys know. Who it has moves Tackle, Tail, Whip, Sand Attack, and Pursuit. So that's a pretty cool Pokemon. And then we have Mistrevis, Tim the Mistrevis. Uh, level 7 with Growl, Psy Wave, and Spite. So that is our Wonder Trades for this episode rather quickly. I don't know what to do with our Shiny, aka Amy. 
I don't know whether to wonder trade that away or to uh, keep it because I want to keep it. I kind of want to keep it, so I might keep that. So I deposit here our uh, Pokemon and I decide to end the episode right here, as I'm going to do right now for this post recording as well. So if you did enjoy this post recorded episode, let me know in the comment section down below. Leave a like and answer today's question of the day, which of course is, what is your favorite fully evolved Pokemon? Let me know in the comment section down below. Sorry I burped there, but you know, I've been talking a lot during this episode and that's probably going to happen quite a bit. It's as you guys know. Uh, and if you enjoyed this, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. But until next time, I'm Jewish Beach Games, and I am out. See you guys again in the next episode, which won't be post-recorded.